Hello everyone! Today, we're traveling to the vibrant world of dragon fruit, also known as Pattaya, an exotic plant that produces one of the most strikingly colorful and refreshing fruits on the market. From its eye-catching pink or yellow skin to its speckled interior, dragon fruit has garnered global attention for both its health benefits and distinctive appearance. But how does this tropical vine-like cactus grow? And what does it take for farmers to produce thousands of these remarkable fruits? In this video, we'll explore dragon fruit's entire journey. From nursery planting, through the blooming night flower phase, to harvest and post-harvest handling. By the end, you'll see how dragon fruit farming blends skill, science, and a touch of nature's magic. Native to Central and South America, dragon fruit of the Hyloserious and Selenoserious genera now thrives in many tropical and subtropical regions, Southeast Asia, especially Vietnam, Southern China, parts of Latin America, and even some warm climate U.S. states. It's prized for its low calorie, high antioxidant content, making it a popular choice in health-focused markets. The fruit's unique exterior and refreshing, mildly sweet taste also attract culinary enthusiasts seeking visually striking ingredients. Farmers respond to rising global demand by establishing dragon fruit plantations that can produce fruit nearly year-round, depending on climatic conditions and orchard management. The plants climbing, cactus-like stems, and nocturnal blossoms lend a certain mystique to its cultivation process. Dragon fruit prefers warm temperatures around 20 to 30 degrees Celsius or 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate rainfall, and well-drained soil. It tolerates short cold spells but is vulnerable to frost. Many growers use trellises or support posts, training the cactus stems upward to enhance sunlight exposure and air circulation. Common varieties include white-fleshed, Hylocereus undatus, pink-red skin, white pulp, black seeds, red-fleshed, Hylocereus polarizes, red skin, deeper red pulp, sweeter profile, yellow-skinned, Selenocereus megalanthus, bright yellow exterior, white interior, often smaller, but intensely sweet. Farmers may select varieties based on market preference, taste, and yield potential. Some plantations cultivate multiple types, staggering harvest windows and diversifying their product range. Dragon fruit is typically propagated from cuttings, stem segments measuring 20 to 30 centimeters or 8 to 12 inches. These cuttings are left to cure dry for a few days to prevent rot before being planted in well-draining potting mix. In nursery beds or containers, they develop roots and initial shoots. After a few weeks or months, rooted cuttings are transferred to the field. Some large-scale farms maintain their own propagation nurseries, ensuring a reliable supply of healthy seedlings. Others purchase cuttings from specialized nurseries with high genetic quality and disease resistance. In commercial plantations, each cutting is planted near a sturdy post or trellis. Farmers often use concrete or wooden poles about 1.5 to 2 meters tall. As the cactus grows, it's trained to climb the post, sometimes with a circular top platform that supports the plant's drooping branches. Soil amendments, compost, manure, or organic fertilizers improve fertility. Installing drip irrigation lines helps maintain consistent moisture without waterlogging. In regions prone to heavy rains, raised beds or well-dug drainage channels prevent standing water, which can cause stem rot. Proper spacing around two to three meters between posts gives each plant room to sprawl. As the dragon fruit cactus grows, Farmers guide new stems around the post, tying them gently to encourage upward growth. 
regular pruning removes weak or damaged branches, fostering better airflow and channeling nutrients to fruit-bearing stems. Growers also prune excessively long stems that produce few flowers. This management balances vegetative growth and fruit production. Too many stems can lead to shaded, unproductive areas, while a disciplined approach ensures abundant, well-lit flowering paths. Prime real estate for future fruit. Dragon fruit spectacular blooms typically open at night, lasting just one evening. Moths, bats, or even hand pollination help transfer pollen among flowers. Some varieties are self-pollinating, but cross-pollination often improves fruit set and quality. Dedicated farmers or hired pollination teams sometimes venture into the orchard after dusk, manually brushing pollen onto stigmas if natural pollinators are scarce. Because the window is short, the flower wilts by sunrise, timing is critical. Weather or lack of pollinators can impact yield significantly. Once pollination is successful, small fruit buds appear at the flower's base. Over the next few weeks, these develop into elongated or oval fruits with thick, scaly skin. Farmers monitor for pests such as mealybugs or scale insects, which can damage stems and fruit. Integrated pest management, like targeted sprays or beneficial insects, limits chemical usage while maintaining orchard health. Applying balanced fertilizer regimens NPK plus micronutrients encourages steady fruit enlargement. In some regions, shade netting or strategic overhead protective structures shield developing fruits from intense sun or heavy rain. The exact approach varies by farm size, local climate, and variety needs. Dragon fruit typically matures within 30 to 50 days post-pollination, depending on variety and climate. Farmers watch for color changes, e.g. green skin turning bright pink, red, or yellow, slight softening, and full bract development, the leaves on the fruit surface. The fruit should snap off with minimal force when twisted, indicating readiness. Harvesting too soon yields bland fruit, while waiting too long risks splitting or overripe pulp. Experienced farmers find a balance, often field testing a small sample for sweetness, measuring bricks levels, and aroma before large-scale picking. Some markets demand partially ripe fruit for longer shipping life. Local consumers often prefer fully ripe sweetness. Dragon fruit's delicate skin can bruise easily. Workers use clippers or knives to cut fruit from the vine, leaving a short stem. Gloves prevent spines or fine hairs, especially on certain varieties, from irritating pickers. The fruit is carefully placed into padded crates or low-stack boxes, ensuring minimal jostling. In bigger operations, a combination of manual picking and mechanical aids, like platform harvest carts, helps maintain efficiency. Harvest often occurs in the early morning or late afternoon to avoid scorching midday heat. At the packing shed, fruits pass initial cleaning, wiping off dust or surface debris. Grading lines separate them by size, color uniformity, and external blemishes. Premium grade dragon fruit shows vibrant, even color, unscarred skin, and the correct shape. Lower grade fruits, cosmetic defects or smaller size, often go to processing for juices, dried slices, or powders. In some markets, minor imperfections are acceptable for local sales, but exported fruit typically meets stricter aesthetic criteria to command higher prices. Farmers pack fresh dragon fruit into cartons or crates lined with cushioning materials to protect them during transport. Some farms incorporate individual fruit sleeves or netting for extended travel, temperature control, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius or 50 to 54 degrees Fahrenheit can slow ripening. Modified atmosphere packaging or ethylene absorber sachets help retain freshness. 
brands or cooperatives add labels with variety info, origin, quality grade, and sometimes promotional slogans about natural or organic cultivation. Traceability codes link each batch to farm data, essential if issues arise later in the supply chain. Dragon fruit sells widely in domestic markets, especially in Asia, where consumers appreciate its bright color and sweet, refreshing taste. Street vendors, supermarkets, and fruit stalls carry it seasonally or year-round. Surplus or slightly blemished fruit might be processed into smoothies, ice cream, or jam. For export, meeting quarantine regulations and shelf life requirements poses challenges. Some buyers demand fruit remain unblemished for days of shipping. Air freight is faster but costly, while sea freight requires sophisticated temperature management. Cooperatives or large exporters coordinate shipments, ensuring consistent supply to high-value overseas markets. Beyond fresh consumption, dragon fruit finds new life in processed forms, juices and smoothies. Vibrant color appeals to beverage makers. Dried slices, tasty snacks with extended shelf life, sometimes combined with other tropical fruits. Powders, freeze-dried or speed-dried powders become natural colorants or flavor boosts in candies, cereals, or health supplements. Cosmetics, vitamin-rich dragon fruit extracts occasionally appear in skincare formulas touted for antioxidants and hydrating properties. Factories handling these transformations rely on blanching, drying, or freeze-drying lines to preserve color and nutrients. Common issues include anthracnose fungus, mealybugs, and stem rot. Eco-friendly approaches like beneficial insects or biocontrol agents minimize pesticide usage. Some farms practice minimal chemical spraying, improving safety and appealing to organic-minded consumers. Weed management typically entails manual clearing around posts or mulching with dried leaves, sawdust, or choir. Overgrown weeds can harbor pests or compete for nutrients, so controlling them is crucial for orchard hygiene. Dragon fruit farming can be water efficient. Once established, vines are moderately drought tolerant. Drip irrigation, composting organic waste like pruned stems and rotating small plots with other crops keep soil health in check. Some farmers generate additional income by intercropping short-term plants, e.g. leafy greens, between vineyard rows until the vines fully occupy the area. Solar panels or micro-hydroelectric setups occasionally power orchard pumps or packaging facilities, showcasing sustainable energy usage. As global consumers increasingly value eco-friendly produce, these initiatives bolster brand credibility. Agricultural research stations experiment with new dragon fruit cultivars for bolder color, sweeter pulp, or sturdier skins. Some breeders focus on thornless stems to ease handling. Others develop disease-resistant lines, reducing chemical input. Tissue culture labs refine propagation for uniform, virus-free seedlings. Sensor technology and digital mapping allow farmers to track vine health, moisture levels, and pollination success. When integrated with timely data, orchard managers can schedule irrigation or pollination interventions, boosting yields and fruit quality. In many dragon fruit growing regions, farms open their gates to tourists or run pick-your-own experiences. Visitors can learn about the nocturnal flowering spectacle or taste fruit freshly cut from the vine. This agritourism diversifies farm income and fosters appreciation for the crop's uniqueness. Some communities hold festivals celebrating the fruit harvest, featuring local dishes, arts, and cultural performances. On smaller family-run plots, knowledge passes down generations. 
traditional ways of training stems are preparing the soil, mingling with modern best practices. This heritage adds depth to the orchard's identity and fosters pride among cultivators. Dragon Fruit's popularity expands globally, partly through social media's visual emphasis on colorful dishes and a push for healthier diets. Some large fruit corporations invest in dragon fruit planting, foreseeing stable or rising consumer demand. Competition among producing nations, though, could spark price fluctuations. Branding and certifications like Global GAP, Organic, or Fair Trade might become more prevalent, especially for exports to premium markets. Demand for processed items like freeze-dried or powdered dragon fruit may surge in the health and smoothie ingredient segments. Growers face challenges like climate anomalies, heat waves, unexpected frosts, emerging pests, or changing global trade policies. Balancing orchard expansion with sustainable water usage and soil fertility is imperative. Additionally, farmers must manage labor needs. Pruning, pollination, and harvest are labor-intensive tasks requiring skilled teams. Still, the crop's resilience, year-round fruiting potential, and broad market appeal indicate a bright outlook. Research, innovation, and cooperation among farmers and local governments can address these hurdles, maintaining a robust dragon fruit sector. From the spiky climbing stems and night-blooming flowers to the succulent, kaleidoscopic fruit, Dragon Fruit's allure is unmatched. The crop's journey, rooted in careful vineyard setups, nighttime pollination, and exact harvest timing, culminates in a fresh or processed product enjoyed worldwide. This marriage of nature's artistry and farmer's dedication yields a fruit that stands out on any plate. If you've relished this exploration, consider subscribing for more deep dives into how exotic crops journey from field to fork. Feel free to share your favorite way of enjoying dragon fruit, blended into smoothies, eaten raw, or perhaps as a vibrant garnish. Next time you slice into that pink or yellow rind, Think of the many hands and late night blooms that brought this tropical wonder to your table.